Welcome to In Him with Pastor Dan Wormuth of Joplin Family Worship Center, located on East 7th Street in Joplin, where they are passionate about sharing the freedom and forgiveness found in Jesus Christ. Now, here's Pastor Dan with this week's edition of In Him. with me to Isaiah chapter 53, Isaiah 53, and we'll look at verse 5. Welcome to everybody who's watching online. I love you. Tonight, again, I got a text from people. I got people who pray for us every day, every day, and they were messaging me saying, once again, I just want you to know we're praying for you and believing God for that service tonight. I just want you to know that is such an encouragement to me, and you have permission to do that. You can say when the Lord is just, when you're praying and the Lord gives you a word, God's doing good things, just shout it out to us, message us, let us know. Why? Because we're anticipating the good things of God to be manifest in every time we get together. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So in Isaiah 53, we looked at Isaiah 9 and 6 on Sunday, and the Bible told us in, in Isaiah 9 that the, his name would be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, which means the Father of Eternity, and the Prince of Peace. So the title of our message on Sunday was His Majesty, the Prince of Peace. Let's just continue with Isaiah 53 and 5. And this is what it says. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes were healed. In how many of you know this verse? I mean, how many of you have claimed this verse? I, I mean, we, lately I've been praying for people and just speaking this verse over people's bodies. But I want you to know, I also pray this over your, your life, your spirit, your soul, your body, who you are as a triune person. I want you to know that he took the chastisement for our peace. There was a peace that had to be purchased and he paid for it. The chastisement in that, that particular Hebrew word, that chastisement means literally he bore the, the chastening or the correction or the discipline. He took the rebuke that was necessary. The rebuke of any time we've ever been afraid. Anybody ever been afraid? If anytime you've ever been afraid, the Lord paid for your walking in fear. With, for your, with this area of our healing, he also paid for our having walked in fear. And there is, a, there is a punishment for living in fear and walking in fear. I know sometimes we only think in terms of fear being like, I'm so sorry you're in fear. I wish you could get free. But I want you to understand that Jesus would have to pay a price for us to come out of fear. For us to be set free, for us to have deliverance, there was a price to pay. And it says right here, the chastisement for our shalom. So as I look at that word right here, peace in this passage of scripture, that word is shalom. And it's this, this word, this Hebrew word speaks of many things. So he took the, he took the punishment of our living and walking under the fear of torment or our choosing fear. And he paid for it so that you and I could have well, happy, friendly, welfare, health, prosperity, um, to, to have favor, to have friend, to be greeted with health, to be perfect, to be at perfect peace, peaceable, peaceably, prosperity, prosperous, um, prosperous, rest safe, to be literally saluted with welfare. When's the last time welfare saluted you? I think it's time for welfare to salute you. Come on, somebody. To be well, holy, completely, through and through. So I want to begin tonight by asking you to remember that this, His Majesty, the Prince of Peace, paid for this. Just as he did for my stripes, he paid for the fear that was so destructive in my life by taking the chastisement of it so that my shalom could be complete. Let that sink in just for a second. Because the last time the devil came at you and messed with your head and threw all kinds of ugly your way, you need to know that the same blood that paid for your sin, your trespasses, 
and his bruises, that he, the bruises he took for our iniquities, he also paid for the cost of our peace of mind. There are times in my life where I have undervalued the price he paid for my peace. But going forward, each time I would have an encounter with the shalom of God, which is a person, every time I would have an encounter with him, I would learn how to greater value the shalom that was paid for. And the more you choose to walk in peace with the Prince of Peace, the more aware you are of that old dirty, low down, no good for nothing dog of a devil when he comes to try to steal it, take it. When you are learning how to recognize real money from counterfeit money, you study only the real. Bankers are not given fake money so they can recognize it. They only work with real money. The tellers work with real money so that when the fake comes across their path, they know this is not real. Come on, somebody. You and I need to study the peace of God, the person of the peace. Study the prince. Be in relationship with him. Let me spend time with him. I think it might be three flats. Let's just try that. I can't hear it. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray. In fathomless billows of love. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray. In fathomless. Now that's an old timey that I heard my mama and my papa and my grandma and I would hear my mother sing and my aunties and my uncles sing. And when I would hear them sing it, they didn't sing it like they were reading it from the words of a chorus sheet. They sang it as if it was words etched on the inside of their soul. They sang it like those who had encountered. There is a peace that comes down from the Father above. There is a peace that passes understanding. I'm not quite even sure how it shows up. All I know is that in the middle of the night, in the storm that's just raging, peace comes. Peace from the Prince of Peace. I'm asking you right here, right now, associate peace with the person and how he paid for it. I love it. I, I, I don't remember where we learned this, honey, but I love it every time you say it is, Jesus deserves to get what he paid for. Remember who it was? You'll remember one day. But I just got to say to you, when, when, once you learn something like that, you just like, what? You, Jesus deserves to get what he paid for. Sometimes when I'm praying for someone's healing, I pray knowing that Jesus deserves to get what he paid for. What he paid for? Their healing. So because of the stripes on his back, they have a right to healing. I pray with that in mind. You and I can worship the Prince of Peace with the fact in mind that he deserves to get what he paid for. The chastisement. What he took on himself was nothing peaceable. It was, he took on all of the scare the fear mongering of the devil that would have been put on humanity. Remember the Prince of Peace as he hung on the cross, he was marred in such a way as that people could not recognize him. The Bible says his visage was unrecognizable, meaning that not only the beating that he took, but the, the marring of sin, my sin, our sin, changed the way he looked. He did not look like the beautiful Nazarene he was unrecognizable. 
He was a lamb slain on the cross. And there's just something about this component. I'm going to ask you to look at three things with me tonight, and then maybe we'll just go on and take these things home. Are you ready? Number one, know the God of all peace. Let's go to Hebrews um, chapter 13. Hebrews 13. We're going to look at verse 20. It says this, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. That's a mouthful, those two verses. Chapter twenty, uh, um, chapter 13, verse 20 and 21. I'd like you, though, to take a look at the beginning of these two verses. Now the God of peace. This is a Greek word. It's the equivalent word for us when we look at the Hebrew word of uh, shalom. And in this particular word of peace, it is indicating for us prosperity, to be quiet, quietness, the meaning no storm, rest, to be set at one again, to be set at original component of being whole. It is by every impl- implication, prosperity, spiritually, solically, physically, socially, and financially. Literally to be at peace. So now the God of all that, that brought again from the dead, the Lord Jesus Christ. So this verse that Paul, I believe is the writer of Hebrews, I can just say this, that the writer of Hebrews is indicating that the resurrection happened from the hand or the working of the God of peace. So it doesn't say the God who was miffed at sinful people raised his son from the dead because he decided that what their sin had done to his son was wrong and he was going to raise him from the dead. That is not what this verse says. This verse says the God of all peace. I just need you to understand the God of peace. He's motivated from peace. He's motivated from that. Tonight, I'm going to ask you to take down this note for your heart and for your life. Know the God of all peace. So tonight, as we've been worshiping and engaging in his peace, and then literally tomorrow when you wake up, I just want you to consider just the rest of this week saying, good morning, God of all peace. I'll have some of that today for my life. And I'll have enough that I can share with another And if I run out in the middle of the day because I have to be in traffic on range line, I'll take a little bit more until I get home. I'm going to ask you to consider engaging him. Peace. The Bible tells us to hold your peace. Um, Sometimes the reference is don't say anything that would cause you to lose your peace. I'm going to say this. You won't say something to lose your peace if you hold on to your peace. You sometimes got to let go of your peace to get Henri. That's a good Missouri word right there, Henri. (laughs) There must have been somebody in my family who was from Missouri because they said that up in Michigan way too. But I just want you to know the God of all peace, we're called to know him. So um, I I, want to read that same verse to you if you'll let me in the Amplified. It says this, Now may the God of peace, who is the author and the giver of peace, who brought again from among the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep by the blood that sealed and ratified the everlasting agreement or covenant or testament, strengthen, complete, and perfect that uh, and make you what you ought to be and equip you with every good uh, thing uh, and with everything good that um, you may carry out his will while he himself works in you and accomplishes that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ the Messiah to whom be the glory forever and ever to the ages and ages and ages to come. Amen. So be it. I like the way that Amplified just adds the rest of the understanding of the Greek there to enhance it for us. So that's number one, know the God of peace. So I'm going to ask us to consider a revisit to his majesty's chambers, to the throne room and take some time to gaze upon his face 
and see that he's the God of all peace. If out of peace or from peace or in peace he raises one from the dead, how much the more can he in peace deliver me from what is not peaceable? Number two, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Romans 16. So I believe that there's some individuals in the room tonight when I was um, seeking him about um, this time together, this was really, really strong on my heart. And the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, be with you. There is a connection between his grace and his peace. Uh, another translation, the complete word study says, and the God of peace shall be sitting under your feet shortly and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will be with you. Amen. Sounded very similar, didn't it? Here's another one from the, the New Living. It says, now the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. So, so far we've looked at three and they've been so similar. It means that all three translations have no wiggle room to be anything different than exactly what it just said. So we'll read it one more time from the New American Standard, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet and the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. So I just want to know, is there anyone here ready for some peace? Well, the God of peace wants to crush Satan under your feet. The old song we used to sing, he's under my feet, he's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Satan is under my feet. What are you doing talking to the devil when he belongs under one place and that's not under your lip or under your nose or under your earlobe, but he belongs under your feet? I just, what the Lord was saying to me as I was just rehearsing this and reading this and praying into this, he just said, you need to prophesy because there's a crushing coming right now in the Christmas season for the sons and daughters of God. And I went, okay, because he was saying this crushing where the enemy will be crushed under your feet. There are some Christmas gifts Jesus wants to give us in this season and New Year's celebrations with the enemy being under your feet. There's a fresh revelation of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that's going to be given to you. And the God of peace, the God of peace will crush him under your feet. So I put on my helmet of salvation and I put on my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of. So with shoes of peace, I will see that the God of peace will crush Satan under my feet. I'm just going to ask you to consider that there's some issues that need to be dealt with and you will best deal with them by knowing the God of peace and then putting Satan under your feet. Y'all just nudge on your neighbor and say, there's an action point for you in the morning. When you get up, I want the devil to groan when you get up in the morning. When you stand to your feet, I want him to say, ouch. I, by the time you hit the door to go out in the morning, I want the devil to say, y'all better run, demons, because here he comes. Here she comes. I'm preaching better than you're shouting me down. Listen, the God of peace wants to crush him. Has anybody here ever been crushed under the weight of stuff? Amen. Words. Issues. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this. One, there's one good place for me to be if it's a crushing, and that's to fall on the rock, Christ Jesus, and be crushed. I will be saved. If the rock falls on me, I'm obliterated. So there's one crushing that's good. And that's when I just fall on the rock, Christ Jesus. But there's another crushing that I just want to remind you of as I move on, and that's the devil needs a good crushing. I'm sorry. But you know, if you watch a little Superman, Batman, there was a, there was a movie and I was watching as um, one of the enemies of humanity was fighting against humanity and trying to destroy the world. And I watched as one of the heroes put his foot on top of the head of that enemy and crushed him and killed him. And the guy had these, the enemy had these big horns. You know, who knows which one it was. They were trying to divide up all those little power boxes and 
Okay, nobody wants to confess that they ever watched any of those superhero movies. That's just fine. But I know you're all trying to YouTube it right now or, or Google it. So anyway, so the hero I, I puts his foot right on the, on the critter's head and crushed it. And I giggled because I knew Romans 16 and 20. All I could say is that in the, in the moment that I saw that, all I could think of is, there it is. That, that's a picture of the Lord, the God of peace, crushing Satan. I, need, I don't know. I'm not trying to spiritualize a, a superhero, you know, Marvel, whatever those are. But I, I am trying to say is that sometimes I see something, I go, oh, maybe that's what that looks like when you and I walk in peace. Number three. Did I tell you how many points we got? Only three. Third one is this, pursue peace. I want to ask you tonight to begin by pursuing peace for yourself. Hebrews chapter 12. We've seen these verses in the past. We're looking at them again fresh and new for today. Hebrews chapter 12. We'll look at verse 14. Pursue peace. Bible says pursue it with all men. And sanctification without which no one will see the Lord. In the Amplified it says, strive to live in peace. I like the word strive to live in peace. But in this other translation, I like the way it's better rendered with pursue it. It says, strive to live in peace with everybody and pursue that consecration and holiness without which no one will ever see the Lord. So there is, there again, peace and relational peace is directly connected to my consecrated life and my life of holiness and seeing the Lord. I didn't put that together. I didn't pull this verse out of this passage and this verse out of this passage and this word here, put it together. This, this, is, this is the inspiration of the word of God speaking to us again in Hebrews 12 and verse 14. Strive or pursue peace. Here's another, another translation it says it this way. Work at living in peace with everyone. And working, work at living a holy life with those who are not holy. Will not see the Lord. Work, work at living a holy life for those who are not holy will not see the Lord. So tonight, these three components of knowing the God of peace, spending time with him, and understanding that that God of peace wants to, with your shoes of peace, crush the enemies of your life, of your, of your, of your salvation, the enemy of, you know, sickness, disease, the, the devil. People are not our enemy. People are not our enemy. People are not our enemy. Let me say it another way. People are not our enemy. I mean, it, just seriously. The moment I allow people to be my enemy, love has to leave its place in my heart. Because love, love will not allow me to be in deception thinking that somebody's my enemy. Have people ever done you wrong? You all can say, yeah. <laughs> Have people said something? Have people done something? Have people, you know, for, just failed you? Yes, but people are still not our enemy. This verse is saying, though, for you and me, pursue, work at living in peace with everyone. And it's, it's, a, it's a job, honey. It's, it's a job. It was a hard job for Joe because his brothers were bigger than him. In fact, all his brothers are still bigger than him. You never put on any. But dynamite comes in small packages is what we see right there. But I mean, Mike and I are pulling him. I'm trying to take him my way. Mike's trying to take him his way. One of us has got his feet. One of us has got his hair. He still has hair. I don't know how, but I mean, my God, Joe, you survived us, brothers and but we're not his enemy. Although he felt it at the moment that we might very well be his enemy because, you know, okay, I'm sorry, but I just, I just need to understand something. You and I need to pursue peace for ourselves, 
I'm just going to ask you to consider one more time. If you would like to have peace in life, you need to make peace with God for you. What does that, what does that mean, Pastor Dan? That means... That means I need to allow the Holy Spirit to be the one to take me into my yesterday and make peace with myself, my decisions. Where I thought I should have had a better handle on something and I didn't. Some people just, some folk are their own worst critic. And the Lord wants us to make peace with ourselves. That's why we had to have professionals who could literally help us like untangle relational issues. Thank you, Doc, for all those years you've been serving and ministering to people and helping them to untangle, find the path of wholeness. Thank you for, thank you for pursuing the biblical training with the training for counseling to bring wholeness to people. Thank you for recognizing every time someone needed uh, an unwelcomed guest in their home and life a demonic spirit to, that needed to be gone. Thank you for taking on the tough, tough situations. Thank you for receiving the recommendations when other doctors had the EBGBs literally scared out of them because they didn't know what to do, but you knew the blood of Jesus could take care of that. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for knowing. Thank you for every one of you that are here tonight who chose wh- wherever your field was, whatever your work was, you knew that even when someone didn't have an answer, you knew who the answer was and you decided to call on the name of the Lord and not allow a person to continue to live in their brokenness and their sorrow. Thank thank you for being that kind of a son and daughter of the Most High God because when you and I will pursue peace and it it is a pursuing, it's working at living in peace with others. Is there any married folk here? Only three. Okay. Oh, there's some more. If you're married, you understand you work at living in peace. Listen, listen, listen. Yes, dear, is not working. There's no work. There's no working at living in peace with a yes, dear. When I say happy wife, happy life, she would say happy husband, happy life. Are you hearing me? Our goal is, I, I want her life to be fulfilled with all that God has. I want her to fulfill every purpose, every dream that the Lord has in her life. If I'm helping pursue that for her and she's doing that for me, there will be peace. Thank you for listening to In Him with Pastor Dan Wormuth of Joplin Family Worship Center. Listen to this broadcast again at KNEO.org. You can also download a podcast version of today's message by searching KNEO on iTunes. Joplin Family Worship Center is located on E7th Street in Joplin and has ministries for all ages. They invite you to join them this week for Sunday morning worship at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evening service at 7 p.m. Find out more at jfwc.org or facebook.com slash Joplin Family Worship Center. Follow Pastor Dan on Twitter at Daniel H. Wormuth. Thank you for listening. And remember, in him, you are free. For 60 years, Crowder College has been empowering students to soar to new heights. From agriculture to education, to business, sports, and the newest technologies, Crowder always has something interesting going on. I'm Adam Winkler of KNEO Radio. Join me each week as I talk to a different person from Crowder College about what's been happening and what's coming up next. It's the insider's guide to all things Crowder. Subscribe today to the This Week in Crowder College podcast, available from the Sky High Podcast Network.